Today I've got this little switch. It came out of a toaster oven. It uh, broke a couple weeks ago and I ordered a new part and it's been sitting on my desk. I thought I'd take it apart and just see how it works. Since there's no button on here, no knob, it's kind of hard to turn. So here, this is what turns and you can hear the bell on the back. And you set it to the timer. This is a 30 minute timer. And then it's supposed to count down, but it doesn't, it just snaps all the way back. So clearly the spring, I think, is what's broken on the inside. Now I was really surprised when I looked this up, I didn't think I'd ever find it. It seems very unique, but it turns out it's not unique at all. In fact, they make all kinds of different models. If I searched on this part number right here, DKJ slash 1-30. Now I did figure out the 30 was referring to 30 minutes because I couldn't find one that was 30 minutes uh, that I could get shipped quickly. So I ended up getting a, a 60. So the one I replaced in my toaster oven was a 60 minute timer. Uh, not a big deal, nobody really uses the timer anyway. Uh, they usually just turn it to a spot and then wait for it to heat whatever they want heated up and then turn it off. Now this one also had another unique feature that I didn't see on the ones that I was looking at online. And that is if you turned it the other direction, uh, counterclockwise, from its normal off position, it would just turn it on. So I thought that was kind of unique. Uh, let's go ahead and take it apart. The best I can tell, the only things holding it together are these little bent clips here, these little arms that are bent over. So let's grab some needle nose pliers and bend them straight. So this only took about um, 10, 15 minutes to replace. Now, one of the things I did notice when I took it apart is the oven itself was a real nuisance to get apart, mostly just because I had never taken it apart and I had no idea which screws needed to be removed in order to get the, the side out. And where I originally started taking it apart turned out not to be the right place to take it apart. But once I figured out what the right thing was, it just took a few minutes to get the old part out. And then as you can probably see, it was soldered on. I uh, made a little notch on the side because I, when I took it out, I wanted to make sure I got the wires put back in the right sequence um, when I got the new part because obviously it took a few days to get the new part. So once I got that all back, I soldered it together, soldered the wires back on and everything was fine. So I don't even know if anything's gonna go springing out of here once I get this off. I guess we'll find out. Um, let's see if we can, oh, here we go. This whole piece is coming apart now. I can see the whole thing sandwiched together. There we go, we'll carefully pull it apart. Whoa, that is a lot more complicated than I was anticipating. Wow, there's all kinds of little springs in there. So nothing too exciting on this. You can see this is the bell, there's just a ding on the back end. And if you look on the inside, it's just, it looks like it's just pushing this down, uh, causing that to ring. So nothing too exciting on that side, a little piece there. Wow, I can already tell this is gonna spring everywhere because there's some tension on it between the, um, the terminals. Well, no, that's kind of, Interesting the way that is you can see where the contact is being made and it's being pushed up by this guy right here I don't know. Let me see if I can turn this while holding it without everything springing apart Yep, so then that um, Huh So that immediately clips down There huh and then opens I guess opens the circuit and then closing it uh, oh there we go yeah that's right so when it's in this position it's open and the the oven is off and then when you turn it, it sets the timer and then as I mentioned it's got this back piece to go back to turn it on and this isn't stopping because it's whatever it is that's broken is preventing it from staying in this position the off position so ultimately my toaster oven was on in perpetuity so huh I was actually not anticipating it being that complicated I didn't I guess I don't know what I was thinking was going to be in there but I thought it would just be one big coil spring and then maybe a couple of gears but just looking in the side here I don't know you can zoom in a little bit and you can see 
there are one, two, three, at least three gears, maybe four. There's a little tiny spring up here and then there's a giant spring in the back. So, all right, let's see if we can pull this apart without it springing everywhere. So it turns out I did not need to probably disconnect those, turn those, because just those were holding that back cover on. So I've already kind of pulled it apart. Um, actually, I'm kind of curious, just with all those pieces, what it is that broke, because I was expecting a, a spring to come spiraling out, but I can see the main spring still is intact. And that twisting was um, was was working. This is all engaging and disengaging just fine. You can see a spring over here. That's still intact. I was um, expecting a broken spring. And there's the timer going back and forth. Huh. Wow. It's kind of neat. You can kind of see it. I don't know if you can see it on the, the video there. I'll zoom in a little bit. You can kind of see it toggling back and forth as it's ticking and then when there's tension on that normally well there we go so it's actually winding up so whatever was broken is now not broken <laughs> it's actually functioning correctly you can see that little itsy bitsy spring in there keeping the one second and you can see the toggle here on that other spring or on the other gear. It's just slowly ticking away and then boom, it's at the end. Ha! Huh. Well, I wonder what came loose. Of course, uh, we'll probably never get it back together now. Uh, that goes in there. Ha! Huh. Well, anyway, that's what's on the inside. I might take a look at it in a little bit deeper and see if this can actually be put back together and what it was that was originally broken and snapped on it. But uh, the whole part, the replacement part was about $9. So clearly it's not worth fixing <laughs> with the anticipation of maybe it breaking again pretty soon. Um, anyway, that was kind of neat. Just thought I would uh, take a picture or video of the inside of one of these timers.